Hey guys, how you doing? Coming at you from Palm Beach Gardens, usually where I talk about yard house. It's about 20 feet that way. I'll show you some B-roll of the area. But today I wanted to talk to you about knowing when it's over, like knowing when it's over. And a lot of us don't really recognize the moment when it's over. It's For some of us, it's cumulative, you know, there it becomes unbearable after a little while. But with me, there was an exact moment in a previous relationship where I knew it was over. Obviously, you don't act upon it because, you know, you got to set your ducks in a row. But there was a definite point where I thought, yeah, this isn't going to work out. And I want to tell you guys the story because apparently you guys really like stories. So by this point in the relationship, I was uh, two years in. Um, had some ups and downs, but nothing drastic, right? Um, and a lot of you guys that watch the channel know my background, you know, the whole... Uh, you know, being raised by my dad primarily, uh, mother's uh, mentally ill, so a lot of the things that I learned were from dad. So dad was the central figure in the relationship. So I think of him in the highest, you know, the highest form possible, the, the utmost respect. I had a very good relationship with dad uh, and mom, but dad was, you know, he ran the show. So fast forward, we hang out with the family, the ex's family, and we don't really get along that well. You guys know the Thanksgiving story. If you guys haven't heard the Thanksgiving story, I'll say that some other time. But uh, there was a couple of times where I, me and the mother-in-law, her mom, there was definite tension there. And I'm one of those guys that doesn't engage in hardcore uh, arguing. I'm just not that guy. But I'm also not let, gonna let shit slide. I'm definitely gonna check people and let them know, hey, this is not how I want it to go down. So one time we were outside in the balcony just hanging out and she wanted to know about my upbringing my dad and all that stuff so i kind of gave her a very how can you tell someone your whole life story in like 15 to 20 minutes you can't so you just kind of give them a snapshot you know like hey you know dad uh, raised us you know i'm not going to tell her every single little thing dad raised us raised the mentally ill mom but they all stuck together the nucleus of the family but then after uh, I was 18, uh, you know, dad wanted to move on and have a normal life now that the youngest was fully grown and we were able to take care of mom and we all understood. Well, apparently the, la the only thing her mom heard was this, dad left. <laughs> Not the whole, you know, raised three kids and mentally, nothing, nothing, just your father left you. Very heavy Jersey accent. I was like, it's not like he left me. He we were all adults. We all had our own apartments and dad wanted to you know, get some side puss. And I'm like, I, I, we all get it, dad, so do your thing. So she, the way she put it, put me off in such a way that I was very angry. Now I'll, I'll show you what happened. But the reaction of the person that I was with pretty much told me where I stood in the relationship. I said, oh, this is how it's gonna go down. So after I told her all that and she surmised that, you know, dad left she she went like this she she loves smoking cigarettes guys the grossest shit on the planet she was like your father left you and I said no not not the way you're making it sound she goes your father sounds like a terrible father <laughs> so I went excuse me she goes he sounds like a terrible father and I didn't react I didn't I looked at the girlfriend and I went like check your shit you know check moms because look when you're with somebody and they don't have your back 100% that to me is the biggest form of like uh, I don't know treachery it's treacherous it's backstabbing it's like you're gonna side with mom over the guy that you're choosing to potentially leave the rest of your life with so this was a simple to me like in a Hispanic household, if any Hispanic person would have said that, a Hispanic girlfriend probably would have stabbed the person or at least checked them like, Mom, what the fuck are you doing? But nothing happened. She just sat there, stone-faced, and I thought, oh, she's afraid to step up to Mom, and I'm basically, you know, nothing. You know, I was like, okay, cool. So at that moment, I knew I was pretty much on my own when it comes to defending my past or anything like that and I wasn't gonna get any support from the girl I was with so in my mind the relationship ended at that moment and a lot of you guys don't have that clarity a lot of you guys have a cumulative 
you know, beat down, you're beaten down over the, over the course of years, and then one day you finally had enough. Well, no, this was like the first time anyone said anything weird, and then I wasn't defended, and I thought, well, it's over. Because it's, that's such a, like, uh, it's such a drastic comment that came out of nowhere that I thought, this is an easy way of saying, hey, mom, you're out of line here. You might want to apologize to Alex, because what you said, I was totally, you know, totally out of line. But no, nothing, no defense, nothing at all. So I thought to myself, okay, time to go in, time to pull the pin on the grenade. That's right, I literally looked at myself and I'm like, I have a grenade in my hand, I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna throw it. This is why. I think it's very important to do reconnaissance work on people you're with and their past. Because if they ever pop off on some dumb shit, but you know they slipped up big time in their past, you can use that against them in the future. Now that sounds kind of fucked up, but you have to do some reconnaissance work. You have to know who you're with. You have to know their past, their background, so that if they judge you for something they've done in the past, or they've done way worse, you can check them. So after homegirl didn't check the mom, I said to myself, I'm going in, fuck it, because I knew that mom cheated on dad. Like it was a very known thing, but no one said nothing. So I said to her, my, my dad's a, so you're saying the dad that stuck with us until we're all adults and with a mentally ill wife, and they wanted to get a girlfriend in a normal life after he was well into his fifties, he's a bad guy. But you left your children's dad when they were nine and seven, did you not? It was almost like being in the Amber Heard trial. You have to know the answer to the questions before you ask them. And I knew what I was gonna say. It was so clear, it was so concise, it was on the money. I said, didn't you cheat on her father with his best friend? And she goes, excuse me? I go, no, 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 I'm not done. Let me ask you a question. What do you think of a person who is with a mentally ill partner, three kids, stays through the whole course of and up until the the youngest is of age what do you think of that person wanting to find another partner after everyone is an adult versus someone that cheats cheats on the father of the children with his best friend and you have the gall you have the balls you have the the in, uh, t testicular fortitude to question my dad, my dad's parenting abilities? Boy, I went in, guys. I threw the pin and I let go of the grenade and it went boom. It just fucking went off in the in the in the uh in the room and it was dead silent. So at that moment I knew the relationship the way I thought it was gonna be was over, right? So on the way back, you try to verify that. You try to verify, okay, maybe maybe she froze up, maybe she was too afraid of her mom. Try to get some of the background because look. I'm one of these guys that I need to know the answers to shit. So on the way back, we're driving, two hour drive back home. You know, that's awesome, right? And I was like, what the fuck was that back there? She's like, yeah, you're way out of line. I'm like, I'm way out of, I'm way out of line. I didn't yell at her, cause I don't argue. I went. So in my mind, I started putting my ducks in a row. Said, get the fuck out of there because there's no coming back from that in my opinion. Now some of you do not have an occasion like that. Some of you don't have a moment like that in a relationship where you knew for a fact you had to go, okay? I did. Some of you have a cumulative effect. It just sneaks up on you. It's like putting a frog in simmering water and slowly you turn the temperature up. All of a sudden they're being cooked as opposed to throwing them in a pot of boiling water and it is an instant. I was thrown in a pot of boiling water and I really was I was happy that it happened that way because I was able to mentally put money away here put money away there move a certain way and at the end of the day I ended up in a better situation than if I would have stayed because some of you guys overlook that stuff and you deal with the mother-in-law you deal with the in-laws and you just hate them but you deal with them because you're in a relationship I said to myself, uh-uh, if it ain't gonna go, if it's not gonna go smoothly and respect is established right away and your partner is not defending you, I gotta bounce. So I thought I'd give you guys a little story as to something that happened that gave me a very clear indication of knowing 
when it was over. Not everyone has that advantage. A lot of people just, like I said, they, they're brought up to a, a slow boil, but luckily I was thrown in the, in the heat immediately, recognized it. It took another year and a half to two years to finally leave that relationship because you can't just leave and be homeless. But even though I, I left, I used the someone wanting a baby as an excuse, but let's be honest, Homegirl didn't have my back for a long time. I held it against her. And when I saw an, an off ramp, I took it and I was better for it. So hopefully you guys stand your ground and don't let anyone treat you any worse or treat you any less than you feel you should be treated. A lot of you guys treat your lady with respect and they're out there smacking you in the head and doing dumb shit and disrespecting you and you just take it. And this channel, if you watch this channel and you follow me, I'm trying to teach you that none of that shit should go down. So know when it's over my story what was your story when you knew it was over let me know in the comments thanks for listening guys and this is palm beach gardens